And this, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm gonna give you an idea of how you can make an inventory system in multiplayer using Fishnet and Unity. So, as you can see here, this is gonna be the finished product. It's gonna be very scoffed, but you're gonna get the idea. Everything works how it should. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So, first of all, let's look at what I already have set up. This is the base scene in my original 7 minute trial on how to set up uh, a multiplayer project in Unity. So if you don't know how to do that, go have a look at that. Now I do have just two objects here, wood and stone, just to show that there is a difference. These two just have a rigid body, network object, collider, there's nothing special about them. They're just made like this and they're on the layer called pickup. I also have a world objects object that is with the tag of world objects. And then the last and probably the most important thing for this is I also have made a quick inventory canvas. This canvas is really nothing special. It contains a headline, just saying inventory. It contains a object holder, which can then hold multiple buttons in here. So if I just go and make a button, go, oh, you can see that these buttons will stack nicely in here. Now, this is not something I'm gonna spend time on showing you because this is just basic Unity UI stuff. And now I've also made an inventory item object, which this is really just as I just showed you, it's a button just with different text. The design is different, but it has no scripts, nothing, not even an event setup, nothing. It's just a button. Now we are going to be working with scriptables. So let's start with setting that up. I'm just gonna call this script item. First of all, instead of mono behavior, this is going to be a scriptable object. And this is basically just gonna hold two things. It's gonna hold a string for the item name and it's gonna hold a reference to the prefab of the object that, well, it is. So in, if it's wood, for example, it would hold the wood prefab. And now just so we can actually make the scriptable, let's create the asset menu. I'm not gonna get too much into what a scriptable is in this case, because it's not really relevant for the tutorial. I'm just gonna set it on the inventory dash item. And now this is basically the whole scriptable setup. Now the items on the ground also need a reference to what scriptable that they are. So let's just make that. Now I'm gonna call it ground item. Now all this needs to hold is just a reference to the item scriptable, like so. And let's just add the script to our wood and stone on the ground. The prefabs, I'm gonna have to open up the prefabs and do it. If they're not prefabs, it would be easier. Now let's go make the scriptable. So if we go into, I just made a scriptables folder, create an inventory and item, as I got right here. I'm gonna make wood, the item name is wood, and the prefab is the wood that we have here. I'm just gonna copy that, all it's stone, the item name is stone and the prefab is this down. Now we can go onto the wood, drag and drop the item scriptable and onto stone and do the exact same. And now go, now this setup is ready to go. Now all we need to do is we need to make the inventory script for the player. So I'm gonna make a script and I'm gonna call it player inventory. This is where the magic happens. First of all, let's just make it a network behavior script. So one thing that's important to mention is when we spawn the player as a prefab, he obviously can't have references already from stuff that's in the scene. So the way that I'm getting these references is by using tags. So the inventory panel, I just tag with inventory panel and the inventory objects holder that holds all the inventory items, I tagged it with inventory object hold. So now just to keep structure, I'm gonna set up a header and I'm gonna call this the inventory settings. And now the way that the inventory is gonna work is that we're gonna have a public, a new custom class. So let's make a public class and call it inventory object. Now this class is gonna hold our scriptable. So I'm gonna say public item item. I'm just gonna call it item. And I'm gonna have a, an, an amount to keep track of. So how many of them that we have in our inventory. And then we're gonna make a list of this. So we're gonna make a list of inventory objects. Now we're gonna call inventory objects. Um, just gonna make that a new list. If we do system.serializable, we can now see this custom list in the inspector. Some of the other things that we want to keep track of, as mentioned before, was the inventory panel. We also want the inventory objects holder to set them as parents as a transform. We also want to get the buttons that we want to spawn as inventory objects. I'm just gonna call this inventory canvas object, just to not confuse anything. We know that these are meant for the canvas. Calling them inventory objects, I would see as confusing since that's what we're calling our class. And then let's just set a button to open up our inventory as well. I'm gonna call this inventory button and I'm gonna set it to key code tab. Now we also need to be able to pick up our object. So I'm gonna set some pickup settings. The first thing that we're gonna need is a layer mask for the pickupable. So I'm gonna call this pickup layer. We're also gonna need a float for the pickup distance. This is obviously both meant for the raycast. If you don't know how raycasts work, I would greatly recommend you go look that up. And the last thing that we're gonna need is also a button for us to pick up stuff. So I'm gonna call this pickup button. I'm gonna set that to key code E. And now we also want to be able to reference our camera, which I'm just gonna call cam. 
and we want to be able to reference the world object holder that I also showed that I had, just so we can spawn items in there instead of just randomly in the world. Now, as with most of my multiplayer scripts, we want to use the public override void on flat client. This is called when the client uh, is started. And so we can immediately check if the object, if we are the owner, so we're going to do base dot is owner. And then this little exclamation mark obviously reverses that. So we're checking if we're not the owner of this script, we want to disable the script. And we also just want to return from the function because we don't want to do more in here. Now, if we are the owner, we're going to continue down here and we're going to find all the things that we need. So my cam, my camera is just camera.main. If yours is not, you can reference it in other ways. But for my sake, it's super easy. Uh, the world object holder, I'm going to use game object, but find game object with tag and I tagged it with world objects. And then it's the transform that I wanted to get. Well, let me just copy this function because I'm going to be using that a couple of times. Now uh, the inventory panel is also going to be found with the tag as the tag inventory panel is what I tagged it with. And the inventory object holder, I'm also going to find with the tag which was inventory object holder. And that's the transform I want to find. Now we pretty much have the start set up. So let's start doing something. So if we go into the update loop, we want to check if we're pressing any of the buttons that we set earlier. So get key down and then pick up button. So if we're pressing the pick up button, we want to run some kind of pick up function. So let's just set that up and set pick up in here. And the same if we press the inventory button, we want to run some kind of inventory function. I'm going to call this uh, toggle inventory. So now let's start with actually just toggling the inventory on and off. So the first thing that we can do is we can check if the inventory panel active self, which means is it currently active? We can do one thing and then else if inventory panel not active self. So if it is not active, then we're going to be doing something else. That's active self, of course. Now here we basically just want to say inventory panel dot set active false. And we want to do the exact opposite down here, but the active is true. And of course I want to lock the mouse when we start playing. I'm going to do cursor but lock state equals to cursor lock mode lock and I want to do cursor dot visible equals before and we're going to do the exact opposite down here I'm going to set the lock mode to none and I'm going to set the visibility to true so now we can toggle the inventory by pressing uh, the tap button oh yeah by pressing the tap button now of course we're going to do more down here because we want to update the UI later but for now we this is all now let's set up the pickup. So as mentioned, we wanted to do a raycast. I generally really like raycasts, they're super useful to use. So we want to do it from the center of the camera and we want to do it in the forward direction of the camera. We want to output this to a new raycast hit that I'm just going to call hit. And we want to use the pickup distance and the pickup layer. Now, something we can just check as an extra if we might have set the pickup layer wrong or on something that shouldn't have, we can just check that if the hit.transform.get component as the ground item on it. So if it's equals to null, we're just going to return out this function, meaning that we're just going to end the whole pickup function if it doesn't have the ground item, because we need this. So what do we do now? Well, we have this list of inventory objects. So now when we choose to pick up an item and we know now that we've hit the correct item, we want to add it to this list. So let's make this a new function. I'm going to make a new function called void add to inventory. And we got to know, we got to know exactly what we've hit and we do, so I'm just gonna call this, I'm just gonna call the item scriptable and I'm just gonna call it new item. And then we can say add to inventory up here. And we can take the hit.transform.get component around item, dot item scriptable. There we go. Now we're sending the item scriptable in here. Now we want to add it to the list, but we want things to be able to stack in this list. This is the exact reason why we have the amount here. So what we firstly gotta do is we gotta go through the entire list using for each loop. So for each inventory object, then I'm just going to call in the object or in OBJ in the inventory objects list. So this basically means that we're going through every single inventory object that we have in the list. And then we've got to check. So what we've got to check is that if the inventory object dot item, which is descriptable, is equals to our new item, it means that we already uh, have it. In this case, we want to grab the inventory object dot amount and we just want to add to that. And then we can simply return out of the function because we've done what we need to do. If it doesn't find it, which means we are outside of the for each loop, we can do inventory objects but add, and we want to add a new inventory object. So I'm going to say new inventory object. And we can actually just popularize it directly in here and say item equals to new item and amount equals to one because it's a new one we're making. So now we're adding the item to our inventory. Now we also got to despawn the item from the world. 
Now, normally you can actually just use server manager.despawn, but when I despawn object, I like to make sure that it happens with authority. This means that I gotta do it through a server RPC, and I'm gonna say require ownership, none, or false, sorry. Which means that everybody can call the function, so I'm just gonna see void despawn object, and we gotta know what object to despawn. And then we're gonna do server manager.despawn object to despawn, and then I'm gonna do despawn type. I'm gonna do despawn type dot destroy. And then in here we can just say despawn object and we can send in the hit dot transform dot game object. Go. So now we're able to pick them up and right. So let's just go test this out for now. So now we can actually see since the list is public and oh yeah, sorry, let's make the list public. Let's just make the list public. So now since the list is public, we should be able to see it in the inspector. Let's go test. Before we can properly test, we need to go onto our player and we need to add the script. So I'm gonna add the player inventory guide that I have here. And let's set up the variables on our player. I'm gonna set my pickup distance to the pickup layer to pickup and I just gave it the button element that I have stored here as a uh, prefab, which was what I showed you earlier. And now everything should look good and it's set up to go. You can see we have the inventory objects list here. So let's keep an eye on that. So now as I go in here, I can press tap and you can see we can toggle the inventory, the mouse comes out. Obviously the camera movement isn't locked, but I'm not really gonna get into that script. I'm gonna select the player out here and we're gonna keep an eye on the inventory objects. As I press E on this, you can see an element was added and you can see we got wood and we got one of them. And if we go to the stone, you can see another element was added and we got stone and we got one of them. Now we can just try and make a few more. Let's go and let me just put them all into the world objects as well, just for good measure. And let's test it again to see if they stack correctly. As you can see, we got wood one, wood two, wood three, and we've got stone one, stone two, and stone three. As you can see, it works perfectly with the stacking. So now let's get to dropping the items. Now, actually, before we work on dropping the items, I want them to be updated in the UI as well. So let's do this immediately. Let's go under the toggle inventory function and make a new one called update in UI. And we can actually just call this every time that we open up the UI, which is when we set it to true. Now, first of all, what we got to do here is we got to uh, go through the list that we've done before, go through inventory objects. I'm going to call it in J in inventory. Object. And then for each of these objects that we find, we're actually going to spawn the, the button. So I'm going to make a new game object. I'm just going to call it OBJ. And then I'm going to instantiate the inventory canvas object. And I'm going to do it in the inventory object folder that we popularized earlier. Now, we also got to change the text on it to actually show the right things. So the way that a button works is that we actually got to get the child. So the way a button is set up is you have the button and under it as a child, you have the text. So I'm going to get the first child, which is child number zero. And I'm going to get component and I'm going to get the text mesh pro UGUI component, but we're not currently not using text mesh pro. So let's just go do this and do using TM pro. And I'm also going to be using unity engine.ui because we're also going to work with the button element. So Go back to this, get component, text, mesh, pro, UGUI, dot text. And now we can set the text to whatever that we want. Now, obviously we actually do have both the item name and the amount. So let's set it to this. So let's go inventory object, dot into the item. So we're going to the scriptable and we're going to set the item name. Then I just want to set the a little dash in here in between. And then I'm going to set the inventory object dot amount. So now we're displaying the name of the item, a little dash, and the amount. So you can go test this now if you want to, um, but th there's gonna be an issue, which is every time that you open the UI, it's gonna spawn new buttons, but it never removes the buttons, which means every time you open it, there's gonna be more and more buttons spawned. So the way that we avoid this is actually before we spawn the buttons, we actually just destroy all the buttons that there is. So we're gonna find all the child objects in the inventory object holder, and then we're just gonna destroy the child. Man, I love writing destroy child, but okay. Nonetheless, now you can go test and it should just work perfectly fine. So now the last thing that we're gonna to get to is we gotta drop the items again. So let's make a new function that's called drop item and we would need the item scriptable, which I'm just gonna call item again in here to actually drop it. So what we gotta do first of all is we gotta check if we have this item in our inventory and which one it is. So we're gonna go through the list once again of inventory objects. I'm gonna call it in inv of obj in the inventory objects list. Now, the first thing that we can actually just check really quickly is if the inv obj dot item does not equal to the item, then we can just continue. If you don't know continue, it's basically like return 
or the same idea of the return function. As you can see, it actually highlights it. It means that it actually stops the current loop that we have in the for each loop. So break would completely stop the for each loop from running, but continue just means go to the next step. We don't need this step. So since that we already declared that the item don't match, we don't need this step at all. So now that we're here, we know that the items actually match. So the first thing that we can do is we can check if the amount is greater than one. If the amount is greater than one, we obviously just want to subtract one from the amount. So we're going to do info object dot amount minus minus, and then we can return out of the function. Obviously, we're not dropping the physical object that, but this is a good start. Now the next thing that we can check if the inventory object dot amount is less than or equals to one, we actually completely want to remove it from the inventory object. Like so, so now we take the entire list and we just remove this entire component because, well, we're going to reach zero or less of the amount, which means that we have not. And then we're just going to return here again. So now we have this function, but how do we call it? Now, this is actually super cool, is that you can uh, add the listener to the button through code. So I'm going to get the button that we spawned up here in the update UI. So I'm going to get the button component and I'm going to add an on click and add listener. And the add listener function is super useful, which means we could just write drop item and it would run the drop item function. Now, the issue is that the drop item actually has a requirement here. We need to give it something and it's not just as simple as telling it that it's the uh, inventory object that we have up here unfortunately it's not that simple but it is still fairly simple we're going to use the command that's called delegate delegate and then squarely brackets and then you can set up in here then we can call the drop item function and now we can give it the inventory object item and then we're just going to add semicolon out here and there we go now this button actually runs the drop item function you can see the reference is right here as well so let's go and test this out Oh, actually, before we test it out, one last thing that I want to do is since we have this update inventory UI function, let's just update the inventory UI every time that we try and drop something just to make sure that it is responsive. Here we go. I can pick up these, these, and now you can see we have two wood, two stone. And if I click the wood, you can see we just drop one wood, drop another wood, drop a stone, drop a stone. So now we need to actually spawn it. And one thing that very briefly annoyed me was actually that the inventory keeps being open. So I'm just going to check if the inventory panel dot active self then we're going to toggle the inventory from the beginning so in order to drop the objects we're just going to set up a server rpc with require ownership equals to false which means everybody can call it and then we're just going to call it drop items rpc we're going to have a few requirements in here we're going to have the game object which is the prefab that we want to drop and we need a vector 3 as a position now down here we can actually just spawn the object which i'm just going to call drop and then i'm going to say instantiate prefab at the position with quaternion.identity as the rotation and world object object holder as the parent and then i'm just going to do i'm just going to do server manager dot spawn drop and now up here when we press the drop button we can just drop item rpc the inventory object dot item dot prefab and we need to give it a position as well which luckily we have the camera so i can give it camera dot transform i can give it camera dot transform dot position plus the camera.transform.forward to make sure that I spawn it just one unit in front of the screen. And I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here. And now let's go test it out. So I'm just going to grab a few objects. I'm just going to grab two of each. I have them in here. I click the stone and I drop it and I drop it on the wood as well. And I drop it. And everything should just work perfectly in multiplayer as well. If you are having any issues with this, please do let me know. Keep in mind that this is a client-sided inventory system, which means that it would be easily hackable if you have whatever a competitive game, an MMO game, whatever. You wouldn't want to use a system like this. But if you have just a normal cooperative game or co-op game, this would work perfectly fine. Because even if they want to cheat, why not? Just let them. Uh, and yeah, everything works as expected. Now, I really hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or feel free to join the Discord as well. And I just really hope that you have a wonderful day.